Okay, so now we've begun pretty good at understanding what the derivative of a function is. So what we'll concentrate on now is how to calculate derivatives. So if I give you an arbitrary function, well, you want to be able to calculate its derivative in a relatively short amount of time. So we'll explore now a whole bunch of techniques that gives you ways to calculate derivatives much faster than using the definition. Okay, so before we do that, let's just uh, clarify a little bit of notation. So if you're given a function y equals f of x, there's a number of different ways to write its derivatives. So we've seen the notation f prime of x and also y prime, but you could use the notation, the Leibniz notation, dy over dx or df over dx. Now this is not really a quotient. This really just means the derivative of the function y or f with respect to the variable x here. And if you're evaluating the derivative at a given point, the derivative at a given point x equals to a, well, you can write f prime of a, or you can use this long vertical bar to denote the fact that you're evaluating the derivative at x equals to a. There's also higher derivatives that we can calculate. That means that your, for example, second derivatives means you're taking the derivative twice of this function. An example of that is if you start with position, then you can calculate the velocity, which is the first order derivative of the position, and then you could calculate the acceleration, which is the derivative of the velocity, which is itself the derivative of the position. So acceleration really is the second order derivative of the position. So that's an example of a second order derivative. But you can go to higher order, and in fact you can do that for any integer n, and this is notation you would use to denote the nth order derivative. Now note that we're actually using a bracket here in the exponent because y n is not the same as y to the exponent n. This is the exponent, uh, this is y n times, and this is the nth order derivative. So it's really not the same thing. Okay, so that's enough about uh, notation. So now let's go back to differentiation. So what we've seen so far is that derivative of a function is defined by this nice uh, limit, and we use that to calculate the derivative of a number of functions. But it was pretty painful, and it was long. So this is really not fun. We don't want to use that to calculate derivatives. We want a much faster way to do it. And it turns out that uh, it's great, because there's a lot of rules that we can use to calculate derivative of simple functions. We can prove all of these rules using this definition, but once we know the rules, we don't need to go back to the definition anymore. So the first rule we'll study is something called the power rule. So in a video, I think, uh, before uh, the beginning of this week, I asked you at the end, so I had a little table, and I asked you to uh, guess what the derivative of the function x to the r would look like. So we had seen that if f of x is, for example, equals to x squared, then f prime of x was equal to 2x. Well, it turns out that the rule is very similar. So if you have f of x equals to x to the r, then the derivative will always be equal to r times x to the r minus 1. And this is true for any r. So r doesn't have to be an integer. It doesn't have to be positive. Any rational number r uh, is such that this rule is satisfied. So this is a very, very powerful rule. Now, you can prove this rule from the de definition of the derivative here. In fact, there's a number of cases uh, that you can separate for the proof. So if you take r to be a positive integer, then the proof can be done in a number of different ways. One will use uh, something which is called the binomial theorem. And this is done in the textbook. So you can have a look at that if you want to have a look, if you want to understand how to prove this rule from the definition. And in fact, there's another proof here that you can do, which is a proof by induction. And if you don't know what proofs by inductions are, I highly recommend that you go online on Wikipedia or something and look at it, because induction proofs are so cool. They're really, really awesome. So it's, it's, it's fun. So it's a good exercise to try to do it by induction or using the binomial theorems. And this is not in the textbook for the case where r is a positive integer. Now, if r is a negative integer, so minus 1, minus 2, and so on, then you can also prove it, uh, but the proof is slightly different, and you'll have to use something which is called the quotient rule, which we will see very soon. And for the case where r is not an integer, so if r is a rational number, then, uh, well, you can also, of course, prove the rule, but we don't know how to do it yet, so we'll have to use something that we'll see in a few weeks. So you have to stay tuned for that. So right now we cannot prove the rule with what we know uh, for a rational r, but you can trust me that it's correct, and we'll come back later on and prove it for the general case. 
Okay, so this is the first rule we'll study. But now suppose that I take a function. Okay, let me choose an arbitrary function. Suppose I choose my function to be something like 4 times x squared. So we know how to take the derivative of the x squared factor. So the derivative of x squared is just 2x. Can we get the derivative of the whole function here just from the knowledge of the derivative of x squared? Well, it turns out that yes, because there's something really cool, which is called the constant multiple rule, which is the following rule. So if I multiply a function by a constant number c, doesn't matter what the number is, and I take the derivative of the, derivative of the whole thing, then what I get is just a derivative of the function times the same constant factor. Again, you can prove that pretty easily from the definition, and I'll leave that as an exercise. So in my example here, what this means is that the derivative f prime here is just, so the function here is 4 times the function, which is x squared. So the derivative will be 4 times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So this is just 8 times x. So you see, I could calculate the derivative here very quickly just from the knowledge of the derivative of x squared, which follows from the power rule of the previous slide. Okay, but now what about if my function f of x is something like 4x squared plus 8x? Can I calculate the derivative of this uh, pretty quickly without having to look at the definition? Well, fortunately, yes, because there's a rule for sums and differences of functions. So the rule goes as follows. It's very simple. So if you have a sum of two functions, f and g, and you take the derivative of the sum, what you get is just the sum of the derivatives. And it's the exact same rule for differences. So here my function is the sum of this plus this. So the derivative here will be just the sum of the derivatives. So we've already calculated the derivative of 4x squared, which is 8x. And the derivative of 8x I can calculate using the constant multiple rule. It will be 8 times the derivative of x, which is 1, so it's just 8. So you see how fast it is. This is much, much, much faster than using the definition for derivatives. Okay, but now what about I have, if I have a product of functions? Suppose that f of x is equal to, I don't know, x plus 2 times x plus 3. Can I calculate the derivative of this knowing the derivative of each factor individually? Well, that's a very good question. So you would probably be tempted to say the following. So if I have the product of two functions, f and g, and I take the derivative, then, you know, the easy guess would be that the result is the product of the derivatives, right? So if you have derivative of a product, then you get the product of derivatives. Well, 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 no, this is totally, absolutely wrong, and never, ever, ever do that. This is really, really bad. So it's clearly not true. So the, whenever you have two functions and you take a product and you want to evaluate the derivative, you don't get the product of derivatives. So let me just give you an example. Suppose that f is equal to x squared and g is equal to x cubed. It's just an example. So the product f times g is just x to the fifth power, right? Now, if I take the derivative fg prime, so what I'm evaluating here is the derivative of x to the fifth. By the product, the power rule, I get x5 times x to the fourth. But this is not the same as the product of the derivative of each of these functions individually, which would be 2x times 3x squared. Right. So this is clearly not the same as this. So this will this is very, very important that you never ever ever do that. Okay, but what is the right rule then? Well there's something called the product rule, which is a little more complicated, and it's the following. So if you have the product of two functions, f and g, and you take the derivative, what you get is a sum of two terms. The first term is f prime, so the derivative of the first function times the second functions where you don't take the derivative plus f of x times the derivative of the second function. So if I come back to my example here, what I would get is that f g prime of x is first f prime, so f prime is 2x, times g, which is x cubed, plus f, which is x squared, 
times g prime, which is 3x squared, and then the whole thing, you get 3 times x to the fourth power plus 2 times x to the fourth power, which is 5x fourth, x to the fourth power, which is indeed exactly the same as this. So the product rule does work, which is great, and this is the one that you have to remember. That's a very important one. Now we'll prove it in the next video because it's a really important one, and it's nice to see how it's proved from the definition of derivatives. Okay, that's great, but what about if I have a function of the following form? x plus 2 over, say, x plus 4. So it involves a quotient of two functions. Can I get the derivative of that function from the derivative of each factor individually? Again, you could be tempted to say that if I have the quotient of two functions, then the derivative will be the quotient of the derivative. But because we know this is not true for the product rule, well, we can guess that this is also not true, and indeed, this is very, very, very bad. You should never, ever, ever do that. Okay, but what is the right rule? Well, the right rule is quite complicated, in fact, and it's called the quotient rule. So if I have f over g, and I take the derivative, what I'll get is the function g times f prime minus f times g prime, and the whole thing divided by the function g, the one in the den denominator here, squared. Okay, so this is quite complicated, and it's very important that you remember it. So there's a really nice little song that can help you to remember it, if you're uh, not sure. So it goes as follows. Low d high minus high d low. Draw the line and square below. So what that means is you start low d high minus high d low. Draw the line and square below. Okay, so you can remember it this way. If you don't remember it this way, that's fine as well. It's just a fun little song. And in fact, we'll see actually, we'll see later on that the quotient rule really is not uh, independent from the product rule in the sense that the quotient rule is exactly the same or it follows from the product rule with m. You also have to have something else which is called the chain rule, but we haven't seen the chain rule yet. But once we've, we're going to see the chain rule, you'll see that in fact you can derive the quotient rule just from the product rule and the chain rule. So if you don't remember it, you can always get back to the product rule and the chain rule and, and calculate it back and get the quotient rule. Okay, so these are the main rules for now that we'll uh, use to calculate derivatives. So what is very important is you remember these rules, you have to remember them, and you most importantly, you have to be able to use them. So you have to do tons of examples of calculating derivative of functions using quotient rule, product rules, rules for addition, differences, and constant multiple rules and power rules. All of these rules, you have to be able to use them uh, to calculate derivative of functions. And we'll do tons of examples of this in class and during the assignments.